Hey there, you're tuned in to MEA Worldwide. I'm your host, Elena Jordan, and today I'm sitting down with Spencer Garrett, who, man, this is just your year. It's been a fun, been a fun it year, It has yeah. been an amazing <laughs> year for you. Bombshell coming up. So excited to see your portrayal of Sean Hannity. And of course, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, Absolutely. Nice, phenomenal. nice little film. People are noticing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah pretty cool. So, very tonally different films, yeah. though. So, for this film, Bombshell, that's going to be coming out this weekend, yeah. this highly anticipated film, because you were playing an actual real person, mm. how did your process differ from some of the other roles that you've played in the past? Uh, Sean Hannity is kind of a character unto himself. I didn't, ha I didn't have to do a lot. <laughs> I watched a lot of Fox News. Which was more painful than I thought it would be, <laughs> um, but it was—I mean, it was interesting because I wanted to get his cadence and mannerisms and his voice, and he has this very specific bearing, and so I wanted to kind of capture that as best I can. But I didn't put too much mustard on it. I didn't want to—you know—I didn't want to veer too far away from what what he already is. So I was just kind of go going with a, a straight up the line portrayal as 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 best I could. So you know, he's uh, uh, he's a controversial kind of divisive figure to some people. So I didn't want to. I didn't want to put any judgment on him. I just wanted to play him as him and let people decide. You know, I mean, Jay has his own very specific idea about you know how he wants these people to be portrayed, and so uh, he had a very specific idea about how Fox was run. So uh, I just showed up and put on the wig and just had a ball. Yeah. Now, what was the audition process like? Because it was such a specific vision. Uh, well, there was none, which was nice. Oh. Uh, this was my third film for uh, for Jay. I did uh, Game Change for HBO several years ago, uh, and that was my first experience with him, and it was just lovely. I would work with him over and over and over again. I mean, he's just a dream. He's a dream to work with for actors. Actors just love him. He just has a gentle presence, and uh, he has such easy command of a set without being a general. He just sort of lets the actors do their thing. He picks the, picks the best actors that he likes for the roles and just kind of lets them, lets them run. So we did Game Change together and then uh, I was lucky enough to work with him a couple of years ago in uh, All the Way with Brian Cranston about LBJ. I played uh, Walter Ruther for him there. And so it's, uh, it's nice to get a call from a director who, uh, you know, it's a nice little validation saying, you know, I like what you do and come back and play in my sandbox for a couple of weeks. So we had a good time, but it was uh, it, it, it's nice nice to nice to be back in in Jay Roachland always. I mean, I was only on the film for a couple of days, but he creates a family atmosphere, and uh, all of these great actors. I mean, Alana, who you just spoke to, and all of the people that uh, that were in the Fox world. I mean, from Charlize and Margot Robbie, my second film with her last mm -hmm. year, and uh, Tony Plana, and just everybody like wonderful actors that I just admire. And you show up on set and you go, oh my God, I get to be in a, a movie with that person. It's just, it's a joy. Well, it also, I think, is such a testament to you that you were able to make such an impact your first time working with him that he wanted to continue to bring you back. I hope so. so. I hope so. Yeah. We, I mean, Game Change was, gosh, a game changer. it was a game changer, but <laughs> maybe in a, it was maybe about 10 years ago we shot it in Baltimore. Uh, and he had wanted me a couple of years earlier uh, for a recount. Uh, the film with uh, Dennis Leary and Kevin Spacey, and he had wanted me to play Jeb Bush in that mm -hmm. film, and I wasn't available then. So I guess he was sort of aware of me. So when Game Change came around, uh, I was in New York, and I did audition for him then, and I was lucky enough to get the role. And you know, a couple months later, I was I was working with him, and and he's just a director that I've admired because he does he mixes it up. I mean, obviously, he's had enormous success with all of these great comedies, from the Meet the Parents films and the Fockers and you know Austin Powers. To go to be able to do that stuff so extraordinarily well, and then to kind of move into the political realm and do things like all the way and game change and recount and you know even uh, uh, what's the what's the wonderful funny movie with Zach Galifianakis and uh, oh. uh, the ca not the candidate oh the campaign the campaign. the campaign yeah so obviously his he's got a he's got a love for politics uh, so it was you know it, it just. Uh, it's just a, a marvelous thing to see a director that, you know, that can mix it up so much and do so many different things in so many different genres. I love that. Yeah, so me too. 
kind of cool for you getting to do all of these different genre genres as well. Yeah. I mean, a big jump from Bombshell, from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Very, big jump. Big jump. Very, very different. Yeah. So what was your experience like working with Quentin on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? It was fabulous. I mean, I had, I had auditioned for it, and I didn't hear anything for about six months. And I was overseas. I was on vacation, and I got a phone call at 4 o'clock in the morning. From, from here in LA and I'd sort of I'd almost ignored the phone call because I was dead asleep oh. and then I got a text and it said you're gonna want to pick up the phone <laughs> uh, and you know it's like I mean he's a master he's just one of the great directors of all time and so getting to spend just a day on the set with him and Brad and Leo uh, and just have a have a blast I mean it was just an absolute blast and and you know the whole the whole process for me was about six hours on set oh. in this 117 degree heat I think it wow. was up in uh, up in Silmar, about an hour north of here, on the Melody Ranch, oh, wow. and it was really hot, but it was really cool at the same time. <laughs> I mean, weather-wise, it was blazing hot, but the vibe on the set was so chill and fun and light, uh, and the guys were terrific. And you know, we knocked out that scene in a, in a few hours and, and just had a great time. So, I had not read the script. I was given the opportunity to read the script if I sat in a room and you know signed an NDA and promised my firstborn male child if I divulged the plot. And so I just wanted to be surprised. So when I went to the premiere and I saw that it was the opening scene of the movie, uh, I was kind of like, oh, that's pretty neat. You know, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I had a feeling it was going to be, I had run into, uh, I'd run into Leo DiCaprio the night before the trailer came out, just randomly. I ran into oh, him wow. at a restaurant and I was sitting. I was sitting in a restaurant waiting for a table, and there was a tap on my shoulder. And I turned around and I said, "Oh, hi, Leonardo DiCaprio." Um, he said, uh, "He said the trailer's coming out tomorrow." And he said, "You're you're in it." And I said, "Oh, terrific!" He's like, "No, no, you are the trailer." And then the trailer came out, and so I had sort of a feeling, and not having any idea of what the story was or what the context of my scene was, I kind of thought, "Oh, it's going to fit in somewhere in the early part of his acting career." Uh, and then it came out, and then when I saw the film, it was a nice little, you know, way to kick off the movie. So it's been a fun, it's been a, it's been a blast. I have now, I've actually seen the movie now uh, eight times. Oh wow! I'm a super fan of the movie. Even if I wasn't, even if I wasn't in the movie, I would have seen, I would have seen the movie at least it's four amazing, or five times. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. So, and I've you seen, discover I watched new it, things every time you watch it. You do. Too. Like they're little, uh, I call them Easter eggs. You know, yeah. like little, you know, little things that you find. Uh, I watched it on a plane going back and forth. Uh, to DC, uh, where my girlfriend lives, I fly back and forth every couple of weeks. So I've watched it on a plane a couple that of times. That has to be so weird for whoever's sitting next to you to see you and be like, "Wait!" Are it, it, it happened <laughs> once. It happened one time, and, I, and the guy was asleep. And I thought, "I'm not, I'm not going to be that like that weirdo actor." But you know, he was asleep, and I thought, "Okay, I'm flipping through the thing." And I thought there were so many movies that I hadn't seen, and I went, "Okay, I'm going to watch it again." And I and I clicked on it. And the guy woke up just as my scene came on. He looked over at me and he was like, <sighs> he looked, he's like, <laughs> he's like, Are you, I'm, yeah, yeah. And I thought, then I felt like such a, you know, little ego twit. No, but. I love that you told that story because somewhere there is that man who is swearing up there. He's like, oh, I'm not to forget. I, I sat swear. next to that guy. Oh, yeah, I no, he had, probably had no idea who I was. <laughs> but he said, wait, well, let's watch the scene again. And he hadn't seen the movie. So then he clicked on it himself and he started watching it. So, uh, unfortunately, I hope you got to see the rest of it because I started watching it about uh, an hour before the movie landed, and it's two and a half hours <laughs> yeah. long. So, I said, when we landed, I said, make sure you go and watch the rest of it because it's fabulous and you're going to want to watch it again. That is so. true guerrilla marketing right there. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. But I, I literally have seen it eight times, and I've seen it, wow. I've seen screenings of it, and I've seen it at the New Beverly uh, Cinema that yes. Quentin owns. And, uh, I got to I got to uh, go and do a little Q and A with the audience there a couple months ago, oh, which was fun. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. I just I love the movie. I love the movie because it's 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 a movie that's in love with movies, and it's a movie that also is a love letter to actors, mm -hmm. and it's a love letter to this industry that I grew up in. I mean, a lot of the references on the television shows from the 1950s and 60s that are referred to in the film are people that I grew up knowing as a as a young kid. Uh, even before I even thought about becoming an actor. My mom's an actress and my grandparents were actors and so that world in 1960s, early 1970s film and television is something that I was just steeped in as a kid growing up. So it was, uh, it's just a delightful trip down memory lane for me in so many, in so many respects. It's just, a, it's just a hoot to watch.
Yeah. It's also interesting too. You mentioned some Easter eggs that, yeah, that yeah. you found. Do you have any particular ones that people might not have picked up on? Little things like in the. I mean, we're actually in the neighborhood where you know mm -hmm. a lot of it was filmed at Musso's, right? You know, right yeah. down the street. Um, a lot of the little posters and things that I missed. And at the time, I was living about a block from Paramount Studios, and they had put uh, posters from the movies of the day, like Funny Girl and oh, a lot of the yeah. films that were going on at that time. They had them. They put them up art direction put them up on the side of the building. So a lot of things that I'd missed. I mean, you see something new each time you, you know, each time you see it. I mean, there's a scene when Brad Pitt goes to the ranch uh, with the Manson family for the mm -hmm. first time when he drops, he drops uh, the girl off pussy to go, you know, see Mr. Spawn. And just a little thing, like he reaches into his pocket and he takes out the car keys and the car key has uh, an R, the, the little watch, the key fob has an R on it for Rick Dalton. Uh, it's like an R or a D, but it's just like little touches like that. I mean, the detail, the attention to detail in the film is so incredibly specific. The costumes and the music, and I listen to the soundtrack all the time. And the the, so the soundtrack, soundtrack also, and it has, uh, I saw Quentin the other night actually at Musso's, and he said he listened to about 14 hours of KHJ radio uh, from the day, which was the radio station that everybody listened to back then. and he curated the little bits, the little snippets of radio play and incorporated them, you know, in between a lot, there's a lot of driving scenes in the film, so he incorporated those in the film. And uh, so listening to the soundtrack and listening to the, the, old, the old radio stuff, you know, KHJ, the real Don Steele, who was the DJ at the time, and it just takes you back in time. I mean, even if you're, even if you're not of that generation, I mean, I happen to be of, sort of of that generation. I mean, the movie took place in, 69 through the 70s. I mean, I was a little kid, but I got I get all the references and all the film references. But even it, that obviously it's a testament to how immersive the movie is and how resonant it is that you know every generation is going to see this thing. You know, even if you know the Manson story or not, or what happened to Sharon Tate or not, you 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 have an appreciation for just the the vast genius of this filmmaking. You know. And kind of talking about the production design and the costume element too. I mean, with Bombshell as well, yeah. everyone has been losing it over this amazing oh, yeah. transformations for two, so many actors. Talk about like talk about two two movies uh, that the, the the costume design and the hair and makeup. Um, uh, Anne Morgan, who's an extraordinary uh, 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 hair designer, uh, she did the wig for Sean Hannity. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make sure that we got that little part thing that he has and the little, we kept saying, I need more swoop, we need more swoop. So we <laughs> had to have that little swoop that he has right there. Uh, and when, I mean, when you, when you see the movie, when audiences see it, it's like, that's, I wanted, I wanted people to go, if, if I'm in the movie for nine seconds and I'm walking by frame, I wanted people to go, oh, that's Hannity. You know, so specifically the look. Uh, Ariane Phillips, the great costume designer for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and so many other films. I mean, we had a four-hour fitting session for that one outfit that I wore just to get the tie right, the jacket right, and everything. Everything had to be, you know, specifically right. My, my uncle, my mom's sister's brother, was a uh, TV and commercial, mostly a voiceover actor, uh, mm -hmm. but he did a lot of commercials in the 1950s and 60s and a lot of cigarette commercials like the Red Apple one that mm -hmm. Leo does in the film. So, uh, so I had, and, and just, you know, I got to watch a lot of that stuff just to get the references and, you know, get the, you know, get the vibe. I mean, it's just like he just captures it so beautifully. Oh. Yeah. Incredible. Did you get to keep anything from either film? Did they give you any souvenirs to take home? I, I would, I would tell you, but I would. I <laughs> we see you next week, like with a handy swoop wig, there just walking a, there around. There may be a tie clip somewhere in a, in a drawer <laughs> somewhere, but I, you know, I'm not, I'm not at liberty to say. <laughs> now, if you could create your own soundtrack to represent your <laughs> own life. What would be three top songs you would want to make sure to include? Oh wow, that's a toughie. Three, Putting you on the spot here. Three top songs. Um, oh my God, uh, a lot of. I mean, I grew up listening to a lot of Jackson Brown and James Taylor and uh, Joni Mitchell. I'm really dating myself, but I mean, I mean, I, I love. I can't artists. pick three specific songs off the top of my head, but uh, I mean, I, I listen to everything. So. Um, Probably anything, anything that anything that James Taylor ever did. Uh, if I could go to a desert island and I could only listen to three songs, it would probably be James Taylor. You know, I mean, I, I grew up listening to JT and the Grateful Dead and classic rock and stuff. So nice. yeah, so I'll get I'll email you my three top songs later. <laughs> I can't 
I'm not. I'm not. I'm not uh, sharp enough today to come up with three really good answers. Unfortunately, we'll get. We'll get a whole soundtrack. You get, I'm, we'll, I'm going to we'll get you. It. I'm going to send you a whole album. Spencer's, <laughs> Spencer's Desert Island Disc. Yeah. <laughs> now you also have some incredible projects coming up. Congratulations Thank to. You. They just announced a HBO series. Yeah. Uh, so tell us a little bit about how that came to be as well. Um, I, some of it had to do with uh, uh, the great Adam McKay, who directed Vice and mm -hmm. you know Ron Burgundy and so many great movies. Um, when Once Upon a Time came out, uh, that character that I play in the movie uh, had you know that sort of announcer thing. And so when I saw that they were uh, when I saw that they were doing uh, this. Uh, HBO was doing a series about the the Showtime Lakers with Magic and Kareem and Pat Riley, uh, and they were looking for a Chick Hearn character. Um, so I called my manager and I said, "Please, you got to send McKay this little clip of me from the movie." So they had seen that, and I went in and I, I went and I auditioned, and uh, uh, I didn't have to wait six months for that one. That was a, that was a couple of days, oh, nice. and that was a really happy phone call to get because I mean I grew up I grew up in LA, you know, watching the Lakers and going to Laker games and. Uh, Chick Hearn is just an iconic character, so uh, so that was a, that was a really fun process. And then we shot the pilot about four months ago. Uh, you know, and the cast is it's, it's Jason Clark and John C. Riley, and just wow. on and on, just a, a, a beautiful cast. So we uh, we found out on Friday that we're gonna go uh, we're gonna go make a TV series in that a couple is months. So yeah, exciting! It's pretty neat. That is so exciting! Pretty, I'm really really excited about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. To get and get to to get to play Chick again. Uh, I got an opportunity to uh, spend some time with his great granddaughter and meet oh, his wow. family and go through the archives and, and look at all the photographs and his championship wow. rings that he had and hear stories about him firsthand from what he was really like. And so I got to incorporate some of that into the, to the portrayal. And so I'm looking forward to, you know, exploring that further. And then, you know, I, I had decided that I wanted to look as much like him as I looked nothing like him in real life. <laughs> so I... I wanted to uh, I wanted to find a way to look like him as much as possible, so I suggested that we do like a prosthetic nose. He had this sort of long, thin beak of a nose that kind of dipped down. So we made that. I'll show you later. And we we made we made his nose, so it it looks as much like him. And he's got sort of a little chin. And I mean, we got to transform my face into looking as much like Chick as we could. So uh, so that was kind of exciting. I'm not. I don't know if I'm looking forward to the three hours in the makeup chair. Every I was morning. like, did you call Charlize and get any tips to be like, what do I do with prosthetics? <laughs> yeah, she's, she's, she's got it down. Well, I mean, she had, she, she, she is such an otherworldly brilliant actress. I mean, she channeled Megyn Kelly so, so beautifully. I mean, I, I, to, the, to the point where I had met her on the set, the first day that I went to the set, uh, they made some, uh, Sean Hannity had brown eyes, so they made some contact lenses for my eyes. Uh, and so I went for a contact lens fitting and I met Charlize as Charlize. They were on their lunch break and we got to say hi and spend some time with each other. And the next time I saw her was on set and, she, and I walked onto the set to say hi to Jay. I was in my Hannity, you know, gear and she was standing, or there was a tall blonde woman standing <laughs> next to Jay. And I went up and I started chatting with Jay and he said, aren't you going to say hi to Charlize? And I, and I and it was Charlize as Megyn <laughs> Kelly. I'm not kidding. I mean, I, I c completely did not recognize her at all, which was kind of stunning. And you know, and she said hello to me in that Megyn Kelly. I mean, she just became that person. So I mean, she's an incredible artist. So that was a, that was a gas. But I had no idea it was her. So that's how good she is. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and that's pretty awesome that now you get to do kind of a similar thing yeah. now with your new show. Is have yeah. a full physical transformation. I think this might be my tenth. Uh, I was trying to count before I came over my, uh, my, my real life person that I've played. Yeah. I mean, I played uh, last year I did uh, Bob Woodward in The Front Runner. I played uh, Eugene McCarthy, Senator Eugene McCarthy. I played Tom DeLay, uh, Sean Hannity, Walter Ruther for Jay Roach. I've gotten to play a lot of real life people, which is kind of fun. And it's a real, it's kind of a responsibility too, you know, yeah. to, to have to sort of get them and, 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 and honor who they were as people, uh, with, you know, and try to put your own spin on it at the same time. So, uh, but yeah, I've, I've, I've gotten to play a lot of like real life guys and that's a, it's a real treat. So, but getting to play chick and to step in those shoes and, and those maroon polyester jackets and those big <laughs> wide polyester ties, I mean, that's just going to be 
that's just going to be a day at the beach. Every day is just going to be a, a trip. So I can't wait. And since you've played so many amazing real people, too, yeah. if you could play any real person and see their story brought to screen that maybe is a little underrepresented, who would you like to see a story about and who would you like to portray? I would love to play, I would love to play Donald Trump. Ooh. Uh, but uh, I think uh, it's, I'm actually in the middle of doing a film right now uh, about James Comey and the FBI. Uh, Brendan Gleeson, the great Brendan Gleeson, Irish actor, is playing Trump right now. I don't have any scenes with him in the film, but I cannot wait to see what he does. A higher uh, loyalty? A higher loyalty that, yes. uh, for Billy Ray directing. It's a four-hour miniseries for CBS uh, that'll be out next fall with Jeff Daniels and Holly Hunter and, uh, oh my gosh, Jennifer Ely and just amazing cast. And so... Uh, uh, and Michael Kelly from House of Cards, an old friend, yeah. and so, um, yeah, I, I'd love to. I mean, Donald Trump is a—he's—it's almost a Shakespearean figure in a lot of ways. I mean, he's a—he's uh, really fascinating, complex character to play. So, uh, that would be a mountain to climb. That's way, way down the road, <laughs> you know. But I'd, I'd love to—I'd love to take a whack at that. There's lots of people I'd like to play, but uh, currently, that would be—I think I, we'll let we'll let Alec Baldwin take care of that for now. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be really interesting. Yeah, though. but Alec Baldwin. Kind of nails it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll give you that. Pretty I'll good. give you yeah. that. Now, talk a little bit about a higher loyalty as well. Uh, we know that this is going to be an amazing series coming to, to CBS, yeah. but how did you find out about working on, on this project as well? Uh, Billy Ray, uh, who directed two of my favorite films, he directed Breach with Chris Cooper uh, and Shattered Glass with Hayden Christensen. Yes. Uh, two wonderful little independent films. He also wrote Captain Phillips and uh, a terrific series uh, from last year, uh, The Last Tycoon. Wonderful writer, director that I've admired for a long, long time. And we kind of became friends on Twitter, oddly enough, about oh, two wow. years ago. And we started kind of DMing each other, and I was a fan of his work, and we sort of struck up a friendship. And, uh, and now I'm, I'm proud to call him a, a, a really good friend, and so he asked me to be a part of this. Uh, I, did, I went in and auditioned. Uh, for for Billy and uh, and he asked me to come to Toronto and so I've been going back and forth to Toronto and uh, I'm going I'm off now and I go back to Toronto for about uh, about two weeks in February to finish so it's a long it's a four hour miniseries so it's a long yeah. process so a lot of coming and going of actors uh, I think the main guys I think Michael Kelly is up there Stephen Pasquale uh, is up there who's playing Peter Strzok and uh, it's just a, uh, Una Chaplin great great actors so uh, you know again it's a, a, a when you are friends with someone who is at the helm of a, of a big project and they trust you with their words uh, and also to do the job, you know, that they're, that the vision that they're trying to create, um, it's, it's an honor to me. So it's, uh, it's a good thing to be a part of. And Billy's going to really do justice to, to, uh, to FBI Director Comey's book and, um, and tell tell the story in, in a very, very fair, say fair and balanced. I mean, that's a, uh, that's a to, to, to coin a phrase. Yeah. Uh, but it, he, he like will. you've been on set too long at Bombshell. I know, you you're right. Can't get it out of your you're head. You're right. So he, but it will, be, it will be a very accurate portrayal of, of, of what went down and the events that went down. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it uh, as much as anybody else. So, I don't want your yeah, it'll be out, it'll probably be out sometime next fall. I think it's going to be on CBS nice. All Access or Showtime. Uh, but it's going to be an extraordinary thing. I mean, Jeff Daniels is playing Comey. Uh, and um, Holly Hunter is playing Sally Yates. Uh, wow. It just the, the cast just gets better and better. So that's a cool thing. And of to be. course you're in it too. And of so course, of course, course it. yeah. it's getting better. Thank but. goodness. Knock, <laughs> knock uh, plastic. Well, yeah. thank you so much for coming in and talking with us. Congratulations it was a on such a phenomenal year too. Thank you so too. much. Thank you so much. And since you are active on your social media, yeah. where can everyone keep up with uh, you? At, at Twitter, I am uh, at uh, the number at number one Spencer Garrett. Uh, and at uh, Instagram, I'm Spencer Garrett one, the other way around, uh, and I'm on Facebook as well. But uh, Twitter, Twitter, and Instagram, you can find me there. So uh, uh, I've got some interesting uh, adventures. You can follow me on Twitter, and so I kind of I, I take some fun pictures and kind of document my <laughs> wacky adventures in this business uh, on Instagram, and Ooh. so uh, uh, and Twitter as well at one Spencer Garrett. Yeah. Well, thank you again so much My for pleasure. talking with us. My pleasure. And you guys can check out all of our interviews at MEA Worldwide. That's MEAWW.com. Until next time, I'm Elena Jordan. Have a good day.